Ooh, you've been cursed. <laughs> Just kidding. But for real, I'm Dr. Mandy Meiskins here from Real Good AI to talk to you today about the curse of dimensionality, or at least one part of it. So you're probably thinking more data, that means that there's more information and easier job for data scientists, right? Well, the curse of dimensionality sort of flips that on its head. And the reason is, as you add more information, actually, if you added infinite information, everything would be equally far apart and everything converges to being very different. Now, let's give an example of what that means. Now, let's say I'm trying to distinguish llamas and alpacas. Now, we know that they're pretty similar, right? They look pretty similar. They have a lot of similarities. However, they're very specifically different. And I'm sure you all alpaca and llama experts are yelling at me out there that they're very different for some number of reasons. Well, if I kept adding more information about alpacas and llamas, infinite things that may be important, may be not important, just a lot of information, everything you could possibly ever think of, infinite information about them, they would be so different from one another that actually we wouldn't be able to tell that alpacas and llamas are more similar than like alpacas and dogs or alpacas and dolphins. Because of all that extra information, it's gargling the signal and you're losing track of what actually is important. That's basically what happens in the curse of dimensionality. And so it's really counterintuitive. This is one thing that makes machine learning problems really hard is we don't know what's important going into it. And so that human intuition of alpacas and llamas are very similar is not in it. So I hope this cursed your timeline. <laughs> Have a good time and hope you learned something. Bye. Thank you.